AEW, uh, Dynamite dropped a little bit in viewership. Uh, if, you, if you're just counting the TNT viewership, it only it dropped 0.4 percent. Uh, it, it did 1.014 million viewers, uh, beating NXT again by a lot. NXT did 712,000 viewers, so AEW topped it by 42.4 percent, a sizable amount. In the 18 to 49 demo, which is the prime demo, NXT was always thought to be the cool brand. With that demo, it topped it by. Uh, one hundred and twenty percent. Says AEW did a point four four rating in that demo compared to point two zero for NXT. So decisive victory again for AEW. AEW slipping a little bit, but not too much. It looks like this is kind of where its viewership is going to be settling in that one million mark. Whereas NXT, it it has suffered bigger drops, but I think it's probably going to be settling to the six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand mark. I think yeah, and I think it's even too early still to say with AEW. If that one million mark is going to hold, or if it's going to rise, or I think it's just so early. Like, what are we three weeks in? Yeah. I think it's really going to uh, ref- d- d- it's going to be decided upon by their storylines and, and talent development and the and the product they put out. I'll say thus far, I love what AEW, the vibe and the feel that they are putting out. I love the excitement from the crowds. I haven't watched NXT outside of flipping over last week really quick, and it was a commercial, I think, and I went right back to AEW. That I've been watching that because I'm from from my standpoint, I'm more interested in what they're doing and watching some of these things. I do think um, and they're trying and they're putting storylines in place, they're putting some things and they're laying the groundwork. It's gonna take time in just doing this and they're going out there. Um, I, I, I didn't I didn't like the main event. I love Chris. I think they and this is just me, and I don't know what the ratings were for that main event. And I don't know if you have that, but I think, and I don't know what they're going to me. And I, Darby Allen, I think, is really fucking talented. I think it was such a mismatch appearance-wise. It looked like Jericho was wrestling a little kid to me, and it doesn't. I'm looking at it from a standpoint of how people view wrestling and tuning in. And again, there's, and the match was great. Everything was good as far as, but I, you could tell watching it. It, it to me. And we know it's entertainment. It's not believable because Chris is a big guy for being. He's not. He was never one of the big. But he's a thick fucking guy, and he's. Mm-hmm. It to me, it just came off very. I felt like I was watching Jericho play wrestle with a little kid. If that, yeah. and, and I've seen Jericho be much more intense and vicious. And Jericho's a tough motherfucker. And I felt like it. What I what I just didn't get the same. I didn't feel like I was watching a Monday Monday Nitro or a WWE Raw big time main event on that, even mm-hmm. though Jericho is a big time main event. And that's yeah. just my opinion on it. And it could be maybe other people have a difference, but I'm curious to see. I think you got to build up more. And that wasn't the main event. I'm sorry. It was just right. Or was it? Uh, that was the main event. That was the yeah. main event. Sorry. Yeah. It just. Uh, I don't know. It had a little bit of a weird vibe to me on that end, and that's just me. Watching it from a from an outside point of view, again, super talented. There's weight divisions in UFC and stuff for a reason with that, and I've always really big on that. And like even a guy like Mysterio, he's a thicker guy though. There's just something about him, energy wise, that's different. It was too, and maybe that is there with Darby. I just didn't feel it right away on yeah. that from from my standpoint. It seemed a little weird for a main event to me, but I know that again the roster they got to do whatever they could do right now and just keep building it and, and whatnot and again you do make stars by putting them in there with guys like chris it just looked too darby hasn't been built up and up enough in my opinion to have that kind of match with chris psychology yeah. was this get is what i'm getting at and to your point that the main event lost eight uh, percent yeah you know through from the the segment before so i wanted to shut it off myself i didn't but i want i go i'm gonna watch this so i could talk about it and it's not nothing against the guys it's just i think Darby hasn't been built up as a credible threat for a world championship match, in my opinion, from a wrestling fake storyline perspective to suspend your belief for that kind of match with Chris. Because Chris having his arms tied behind his back and took everything he had to beat Darby Allen, who is at this point of the game, the equity in him is not anything in pro wrestling where it will be in time. Yeah. So, and to your point, Matt Morgan, who does our, our review shows on Wrestling Inc., he he loved he loved the show, 
but he lost his mind with Marco Stunt being in that match and being competitive and uh, just being in that ring with those guys. And it's kind of kind of the same thing, but even more exaggerated. A uh, <laughs> lot of mixed feelings with Marco Stunt being in there. But I think I had I had a friend of mine during that match who never watches wrestling. It uh, was changing channel, texted me and said, it looks like there's a fan wrestling on this yeah. show. Um, I just think if you're getting these first time viewers, a lot of, you know, the hardcore fans, maybe they don't care about the visuals uh, of what it looks like. The problem is the hardcore fans like these guys because they remind them of themselves and that gives Mm -hmm. them hope that they can do it. That's not how you create a business. I'm sorry. It's not. And it's, uh, you don't go to a movie. If Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't look like he could kick your ass in Terminator, and they had a little 130-pound skinny person trying to beat up machines, you wouldn't believe it. Right. It's insulting to your intelligence. That's the part of pro wrestling that has gone out the window right now. That That's why people are tuning out, in my yeah. opinion. If you're casting a Rocky movie, you're not going to cast an out-of-shape no, you know, fat guy. You know, as the as the big opponent at the end. It's just you just don't do it, and it's because perception is reality, and how people perceive you, and they're not. And again, I understand, but there's a fine line in all of this of, of a balancing act. And like a guy like Marco Stunt can be a star in pro wrestling, but you can't. This is the problem with a lot of today's wrestlers. This is why I said older wrestlers are superior psychology wise, because being a good wrestler. Today, all it requires is, oh, I know 150 moves. We go in there and we each do 150 moves. That's not being a good pro wrestler. It's knowing that you're a little guy and that you need to have psychology and that the stuff that you do, you need to be fighting from underneath and that your one punch isn't the same one punch as a 300-pound guy. And it's that you're selling your ass off. You're not coming right back up, no selling moves and do, because you throw away the history of pro wrestling. And I'm telling you, Raj, today's guys as a whole, don't understand that. And that is why the ratings have gone down because psychology was put in place to suspend the audience belief for a reason. We have thrown out the rule book on pro wrestling in, in a way, and it is hurting the business. Yeah, I mean, to your point, I think when people say that, uh, well, today's fans don't care. Well, that that today's fans, that fan base is dropping and dropping and the yes. ratings keep dropping. You need to get those casuals back. And those casuals, if they're watching sports, and if you saw a guy Marco Stunt size fighting a guy, Phoenix me and Marco size, Stunt having a match. Mind. Imagine me and Marco Stunt. If that, but based off today's psychology, I make my big return to AEW. I come back. We have a main event match with me and Marco Stunt, and we do forty-five minutes, just trading moves the whole time. Does that? Is that? Does that? Doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. because people. It doesn't. It's so yeah. there is a fine line and balancing act, and I, I do believe Cody. I believe, and I think even what I'm watching right now, everything they said, and what I'm seeing, I think they will be smart enough to adjust and evolve this to appease both worlds. I think they're going to be much more open-minded than WWE, even though they just don't have the depth of a WWE yet. But I think if they can just stay afloat here and keep improving this, they're going to stand a good chance to succeed if they... if. Little things like that, and it, it, that, that stuff could be fixed. But you got to be very careful, I think, of just plugging pieces, spokes into the wheel into this. There is a real thing to superstars and megastars, and, and it's in psychology and pro wrestling. So it's, it, to yeah. me, it's, a, it's spitting in the face of everyone who sacrificed their lives for this and held it up for all that time. And then we're our generation, and, and the fan base has kind of thrown it away. In a way, and I get it. It's entertainment. It's fake. You can do whatever you want, but you can't throw away. You can't have Big Show wrestling Marco Stunt for thirty minutes trading moves. It doesn't work. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, and and to be fair, it wasn't supposed to be Marco Stunt that uh, spot. It was supposed to be Luchasaurus, but he uh, had a ham- got a hamstring injury while working out before the match, so uh, it was changed. Uh- <laughs> Hey guys, it's the big guy Ryback, and I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Go ahead and punch that like, smash that subscribe button, and check out my all-natural su- my all-natural supplement line. Supplement, supplement. Stupid. My all-natural supplement line. Feed me more nutrition. Available on Amazon and feedmemore.com. And as always, Conversation with the Big Guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and wherever podcasts are available. Never forget. 
Feed me more. Thank you for tuning in to this segment of Ryback's Conversation with the Big Guy. Watch full episodes here on YouTube. Subscribe if you're new. Smash that like button if you had a great time watching. 